Jared, I, I got to ask you, have you ever thrown any tacos at opposing players when you were at the Texas Tech? And just give us some of your thoughts on going back home. Yeah, um, when I was a, a little kid going to the game, I threw my fair share of tortillas um, down on the on the field. Um, and I'm excited um, just to go home and, and play in front of a, a lot of my friends and family. Um, it's going to be exciting. Go ahead, Greg Hunter. So we, we just talked to, uh, to Neil about the 2012 game, and you've talked in the past about how you were there. But, but go over that again, um, because obviously that was, that was a big moment for your brother and, and for Texas Tech. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like it was yesterday. Um, Geno Smith and Stedman Bailey and Tavon Austin, all those guys came in, uh, ranked three or five, I can't remember. Um, and, and my brother had a really good game, and I asked my dad if I could rush the field. Um, went on the field and ran around. I uh, tried to find my brother, couldn't find him, um, but just kind of enjoyed the experience of getting the rush of the field and was hoping I could do that one day. Um, and hopefully this time I can reverse the roles and, um, you know, go out there and do what my brother did on, on uh, for West Virginia. Kevin Kinder is next. Go ahead, Kevin. Jared, when you have a negative play or something bad happens during the game, what's the process you go through to kind of reset and get back on track? Anybody in particular you talk to, anything you do? And then, you know, what does that work? You know, what's the result of that working that out when, you know, that happens, something happens well positive? Yeah, first thing I do is um, I go get on the phone, uh, talk to Coach Reagan, see what I did wrong or what he saw, what I saw, um, get it fixed. Um, and then go to the old linemen, touch all those guys, uh, let them know that uh, we're going to go to the next play, um, go to the receivers, tell them I'm coming right back to them, um, you know, and just it reset my mind and, and play the next play. Don Williams is next. Hi, Don. Hello. Thank you. Hey, uh, Jarrett, uh, Neil was talking yesterday on the conference call about uh, his recollections of you when you would come to camp. He said you and uh, – Charlie Brewer would come to camp when y'all were young guys. Mm -hmm. Do you remember uh, how many times you went to camp at Texas Tech and what that experience was like and what your early impressions were of Neil when you were, you know, 12 years old or whatever? Yes, sir. I mean, I was going to camps um, at Tech ever since I could uh, throw a football. I was going to the three-day camps, the one-day camps. Um, and then when Coach Brown was there, I remember um, – specifically dropping on a line and and we're still doing that today um and I always liked him ever since I met him um like I said he would take us down there just him and me um and throw on the game field um so you know I've been going to camps at Tech for a while and um I specifically remember uh getting some work in with Coach Brown we'll go to Cody Nesper hi Cody Hi. Hey, Jarrett. Um, I was just wondering, since the Pac-12 hasn't started yet, uh, do you know, if, is Seth going to be able to go on Saturday? And then I was just wondering if you could talk on the relationship between you guys and, and what it was like for you to kind of, you know, grow up watching him play. I think um, they're having practice right now and scrimmages on Saturdays. Um, they're basically in fall camp right now, so he's in full force of coaching and, and doing that whole deal right now. Um, so he won't be able to make the game. Uh, I'm sure he'll watch it on TV. Um, and growing up, um, it was like a unreal experience for me. Um, just watching him uh, go to work on, on Saturdays is exactly what I wanted to do. Um, seeing him sling the ball around, um, which made me go want to play in an air raid offense just like that, and, and sling the ball around. And I've gained a lot of knowledge from him, and I still do today. And hopefully uh, one day I'll get to coach with him too. Um, so I'm just really following in, in his footsteps um, and just trying to, you know, be just like him. We'll go back to Greg Hunter. So, Jared, the, the West Texas winds are notorious for those of us who aren't there. Mm -hmm. So you lived in it. What's it like? And then what's it like to play in it? And are there fundamentals you have to do to be successful in it? Yeah, I grew up, uh, grew up in, in high school having to deal, deal with it, um, going to camps at Tech, dealing with it. And really, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, you just kind of have to tighten your spiral down. Um, 
and you know put maybe a little more velocity on it um, but there's no there's no secret to it or, or key to it um, just throw the football in the wind we'll go to Mike Kazaza hey Jared how's it going how are you I'm great thank you um, I have two for you one's on your receivers and you know how guy like guys like Bryce and Sam are, are still young and learn a little bit and I'm imagining part of your responsibility is to kind of pay individual attention to them and make sure that they're not off the rails and you know they stay on track for you. I'm just curious how you go about that. And then separately, when you guys get down inside that 20, it seems like things change and you're pretty affected down there scoring a lot. Um, what's different for you as a quarterback, whether it's the plays, the personnel, or the timing, once you get down in that red zone? I think the fact that we uh, made it a point of emphasis during fall camp of wanting to get, be better in the red zone, um, I think – um, we have, you know, Coach Parker has taken it all upon him to call the plays when he gets in the red zone. And I think he's done a really good job of that. Um, and then just keep working it, um, keep working it in practice, and, and it keeps making us better once we get in the red zone. Back to you, John. Yeah, just curious. I don't know if, if you said this before or not. How many uh, people you got coming to the game, I guess, with the reduced capacity there? Is there any issues with getting all your crew into the game to watch you? Hasn't really been any issues. I think a lot of guys aren't using their tickets uh, to this game. So I've been asking a couple guys to get me some of their tickets. And I think I'll have around 15-plus uh, uh, family and friends come um, and cheer in my section. We'll take these final two questions. Back to Don. Uh, Jarrett, can you remind us uh, how old were you or what grade were you in when you're uh, when y'all moved to Lubbock? And uh, I remember, of course, Seth going to Friendship. What what, what schools did you uh, attend when you were living here? So the the I started in Ira Ann, Texas. I didn't go to school there, and then we moved to Crane, Texas. I think I went from pre-K to first grade. We moved to Lubbock. My brother went to Friendship. Um, I was there from second and third grade, and then we moved back to Ira Ann. I was there from fourth grade to sophomore year. We moved back to Lubbock, and I went to Lubbock Cooper my junior and senior year. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Jared, I want to get back to the receivers and, and kind of the caretaker role you have with uh, Bryce and Sam. Yeah, I mean, um, those two guys are, are one of our – two of our best receivers. And if they're having uh, good games or bad games, I'm always there. Um, right when I come off the sidelines, if, if it's a drop, I'm telling them I'm coming right back to them um, every time. Um, those are my two go-to guys. Um, if they're having, they're having ball, uh, if they're balling out, then I don't really got to say much to them. And if their confidence is high, um, you really don't have to say much to them. Just keep giving them the football.